There are very few, if any, Souls likes that I would be willing to put up there with FromSoft Studio titles. Nearly every one of this subgenre has one or more aspects that make it to where I could never really suggest the game to somebody who isn't already a fan of the subgenre. Thymesia had the gameplay but a shallow world, Still Rising had the world but mid gameplay, and Dolmen, well, Dolmen was Dolmen. Now, to be fair, all of these studios are indie studios and their budget is nowhere near what Team Ninja is able to develop, and I think their pedigree alone gave a ton of inclination that if any company was to stand toe to toe with from software, it would probably be them. And while I still think they have a long way to go, let me tell you why I love Wolong Fallen Dynasty so much and why it's worth your time. If you like what you see, don't forget to like and subscribe. And if you're feeling naughty, go ahead and hit that bell notification. Let's get to it. Wolong Fallen Dynasty's story is set during the chaotic Three Kingdoms period in a heavily fantasized version of it. The Han Dynasty is infested with demons, and you're tasked with banishing them. The game starts off with the village being invaded by the Yellow Turbans. In a first-person point of view of what will soon be your created character, you save a blindfolded kid from an onslaught of attackers, but during the tussle are fatally wounded and brought back to life by a Jade Emblem. This creates a bond between you and the kid that you saved, and you start your journey of cleansing the territories. The story altogether was my least favorite part, unfortunately, even though it did have the blueprint for success. A story of China rarely told, a mix of historical figures and dark fantasy, it could have all been so cool. But the English dub is just so poorly done and extremely jarring to listen to. Like, check out this guy's voice. The enemy is almost upon us. Please, my lord, order a retreat. <laughs> Do not falter, for our mission is clear, to bring the world under the yellow heaven. It just never sounded natural and was over the top and cringy, and unfortunately just fell altogether flat. Gameplay on the other hand, Wolong excelled on. Now, I never go into depth about gameplay features in my reviews, and I'm not going to start here, but Wolong does something interesting that makes the gameplay loop so interesting. Basically, each level is set in a mission structure, with your fortitude level starting at zero. As you progress and kill enemies that are stronger than you, you'll raise that level, but you'll only permanently raise your base fortitude level by raising battle flags as you go, which creates a really unique twist on the formula where you could technically beeline towards a boss or bigger enemies, but your usual best bet is to level up in the surrounding areas before tackling the challenge, almost making the boss the set piece as you loot and navigate the world around it. While it was absolutely never the masterful level design that Souls games have, it still was an interesting approach that I believe deserves some merit. And there still is a traditional leveling up system and sorceries that come along with what you spend your skill points on that all have their strengths and weaknesses. Unfortunately, the spells I offer never in my experience really offered much bang for their buck other than enchanting your weapons, and it would have been cool if they were just more interesting to use, but there were some cool implementations like using the ice trap to cool down Lu Bu's flame attacks and things of that nature. The bread and butter of the combat system is hands down its parry system though. And this fucking parry system absolutely carries this game. It's frenetic and satisfying and so damn smooth in the same way Sekiro is. And you could literally parry anything from a fallen log to flames as they approach you. It doesn't matter. And I just could not get enough. Performance on the Xbox Series X for the most part was great. The textures on the game overall aren't anything to write home about. There was some shuddering, and I had a ton of scares where the screen would just go black, one time in the middle of a boss fight right at the end, but luckily the game never crashed on me, and these were pretty rare occurrences. All in all, I think Team Ninja has a massive hit on their hands, at least in my eyes. I already purchased the season pass to support the devs because there wasn't one time through my roughly 40 hour playthrough that I felt bored or like I had enough, which is no small feat. 
The bosses are fun and memorable, the gameplay loops incredibly addicting and satisfying, the variation in weapons and playstyles kept it fresh, the achievements or trophies depending on what system you're playing on are all very attainable, and while I think the game could have been a little bit harder, the challenge was absolutely there and made me immediately go buy Neo 2 to play more of their titles. It's an 8.5, take it or leave it. Thanks for watching.